Judy Hare was a bankrupt, homeless, drug-addicted college dropout on the brink of divorce, but is now a seminary graduate and devoted wife and mother of four children. What happened? Find out in her autobiography, Shattered, How God Restored My Heart and Life. Her journey of faith has been called brutally honest, truly inspiring, profound, heartbreaking, and life-changing. Shattered is available now for only $15 on her website, judyhair.com, on amazon.com, or at your local Catholic bookstore. As Judy says, it is never too late to become the person you deserve and desire to be. So stop wishing for change and start doing something about it by reserving your copy of Shattered today. Welcome to Journey with Judy, a weekly podcast filled with faith-infused inspiration, information, and an opportunity for implementation. Now, here is speaker, coach, author, and host, Judy Hare. Hello, this is Judy Hare, and you have joined the Journey with Judy podcast. We are still in the year of 2020, and I say that because I am praying that God is going to do mighty things in terms of our clarity. I mean, how amazing would it be if at the end of 2020, we saw with greater clarity, spiritually, personally, financially, relationally, just the whole bucket of stuff. If we saw it with greater clarity, um, if we saw it through the lens of faith, if we saw it through the eyes of God, how different Um, our hearts and our lives and our minds and our world would be. So that's what I'm praying for. So thank you for joining me and our topic tonight. I've changed it 62 times, so I'm just going to make it all these topics. So it's Blind Side. And for those of you who have ever seen that movie, The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock. So the blind side, like we got to have people who have our blind side. The other part of tonight's uh, podcast is what's it like to be on the other side of me? Now, you don't get to answer, but someone who you love is going to get to answer that. I think that's going to be your homework. And that the climate dictates the forecast. So that's the overarching theme for this evening. And the reason that's the theme is because my family is always my best material, okay? They came from me when counseling many years ago. The therapist said, your kids are about as intense as you and about as irritable as Bob. So here we have these four children and three of them, plus my daughter-in-law, are going to be coming into town. Some are already here and the final guy shows up on Friday and my friends, I have not seen these children since Christmas. Now, the thing about the climate dictating the forecast is we're kind of planning our weekend based on the forecast, right? I like to call it a faith cast. My kids think it's rather called a forecast. So the thing about a forecast is the climate dictates it, right? So if the climate is the typical weather in the region, uh, climate is also known as the prevailing conditions, and climate is also the setting, okay? So climate dictates the forecast. So two of my family members, my man and my daughter, Cam, are always looking up the forecast. Like they're always gonna be telling you what's coming. Well, I'll tell you what's coming this weekend. Some irritable and some intentional and some intense children because they came for me and Bob. So while I wish I could control the climate of my home the same way I can in my vehicle, like I can just control my side and not really worry about what everyone else's climate and temperature is, I have to tell you, it is not that easy to control our children because here's the deal. Our kids act just like we did. Yes, they act just like we did. And I remember before my mother passed away, she used to say, I hope I live long enough to see you have children just like you. Well, the Lord has answered that prayer and given me children who hold a mirror up and tell me what it is like to be on the other side of me. So when it comes to my family, the climate is kind of predictable. Now, can you can just raise your hand if that happens at your house where you can see the you can see it coming. 
like before it's even in the site, you can kind of predict the climate. Yes and yes. Okay, good. Because I wonder if any of this is relatable. So it's, it's more like, I'm more like the weatherman that I am not even in control. Like I just, I think the weather people just go like this and just pick a forecast and they're not even held accountable to it. The reality is we, my friends, can control the climate. I think the misconception is that we cannot control. Now, why we cannot control the thoughts or feelings or actions of another. My kids say, if it's not one thing, it's your mother. The fact is I can control me and what I think, say, and do. So here's what's so interesting. And if you have children, I hope you can ponder this. I've come to this huge awareness that my children as adult children are exactly the way they were when they were children. Here's what I mean by that. Everybody assumes the same role as they did when they were kids. Does that make sense? Like, can I get one of these? Where if we're really paying attention, they do, the dynamic is the same. Certain ones connect better with others. Certain ones gets a little stormy. The reality is it's everybody showing up the same as they were when I was less aware and less in control of my climate. So they do now like what they did then. And so I found this quote today and it said, there's a sad truth in the life I found while journeying East and West. The only folks we really wound are the ones we love the best. We flatter those we scarcely know and we really think and give those others a thoughtless blow. So did that make sense? So we, we flatter those we barely know and we give the biggest blow to the ones that we love the most. And so hands up again, I need part, full participation on this. I cannot be alone, thank you so much. So the fact is we have this opportunity to be with them and I'm hoping that it's going to be exactly what it's supposed to be. I'm just going to leave it at that. So I come with no expectations and then I just, you know, have hope, right? Hope is an, a, a hopeful anticipation of things to come. So I am embracing that. However, if I was a weatherman, I would tell you that it's probably going to be initially start of the day, a little bit sunny, might get a little cloudy by noon. I'm thinking there'll be an afternoon torrential damaging downpour. And by evening, I'm thinking it's going to be a national sibling state of emergency. That's my forecast. And I will tell you next week how accurate I am. So my prayer as of late has been to help me see and know so I can listen, learn, and grow, right? Help me to see and know so I can listen, learn, and grow because I want to be self-aware. Like, I mean, it is such an amazing thing when we have a conscious knowledge of our characteristics, right? How we're feeling, what our motives are, what our intentions are. Um, life is different when we have that sense of awareness, right? So how can we be aware of our part, our peace, and if our overarching theme tonight is that the climate dictates the forecast, then you got to know that you bring the climate. You bring the climate wherever you go. So hands up, like that's a bummer, isn't it? Because don't we want to blame everyone else for how we react? Yes, we, I do. We do. The fact is, is that my climate goes wherever I go and I have the choice about how I choose to show up. So, so many of us feel so powerless and out of control. We find ourselves reacting to a situation. And so what I pray is rather than react, I pray that we have people that have our back, right? That we have godly people uh, that can say, yeah, you're not acting like Jesus, right? My kids, when they were younger, they would say, mom, you're really acting more like Judas than Jesus. And so I took offense to that way back when. Today, my, thing, my skin is a little thicker because I don't want to be acting like Judas. I do want to be acting like Jesus. And 
What that requires is not only the F word from previous podcasts, the forgiveness word, it's the feedback word, right? That F word that is such a gift and only, only my friends, if we can perceive it, believe it, and ultimately receive it, okay? Proverbs 1, 5 says, a wise person will hear and increase their learning. A fool will not. So Proverbs tells us if we're wise, we want to listen and learn and know, right? So we can seek understanding and continue to grow. So when my kids were, I don't, I mean, for the longest time, for as long as they lived under my roof, the standard words they would say to me are two. They would say, what's wrong? What's wrong? That's, that's how they start everything. Now, it didn't matter if it was over a text message, an email from their classroom. I mean, I'd pick them up at the end of their school day. They wouldn't even see my face and they'd be like, what's wrong? So the reality is I finally just said to them, like, this is my face. Like, this is just how I look. And so nothing is wrong. However, something was wrong because the climate of my heart back then dictated something about being out of sorts and out of sync and not in a place of certainly receiving their feedback. So if self-awareness is an opportunity to grow in our relationships, they say it's the key ingredient, self-awareness, right? A wise person seeks this knowledge. It's a key ingredient for connection, for relation, and for communication. So self-awareness has a component in emotional intelligence. That's when we know our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. In other words, the climate we bring, the climate we bring wherever we go. If we are self-aware, then we know how we show up. So another scripture that came to mind was one that hung on my, our boy's bathroom mirror for the majority of their teenage years. And it was from the book of Genesis, and it said, master your desires, or they will master you. Master your desires, or they will master you. And so this thing about God is he wants to help us see and know what it is that we do. He lovingly says, hey, that's not, you're better than that, right? I don't judge you by what you do because what you do is not who you are. And he's so much more loving and forgiving than certainly the people in my house. And I'm guessing in some of yours. Yes, thank you. So Genesis 4, 3 is the story of Cain and Abel. And I, it never crossed my mind that I was raising them, not one single time. So the story of Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis is when the Lord said to Cain, so they both had an offering. I don't know if you remember that in, this, in the book of Genesis, but Cain and Abel both brought their offering to the Lord and the Lord favored Abel's and not Cain's. And so Cain was angry and downcast, like kind of like, what's wrong? Like, and so Jesus, the Lord said, God said, like, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong with you? Why are you downcast? Don't you know? that I see through that, right? And so Cain said to his brother, after his brother, you know, got favored with the Lord, Cain's like, yeah, let's, let me take you for a little walk so I can kill you, right? I don't know if you remember the story, but he ultimately killed his brother. And so the Lord came back to him and said, where's your brother? And Cain's response was, am I my brother's keeper? And so what's so awesome about that story is the answer is yes and yes. We are absolutely our brother's keeper. And that is the way that we have everybody else's blind side. If people are our keeper and we are their keeper, then we're able to speak the truth in love. And we're able to recognize that it's never a me and it's always a we, right? What I do affects you and what you do affects me because it's always about a we and it's never an isolated thing. That's the thing about sin. You know, we, we live in a world right now that is saying that we have the right to say and do and be. Well, our right is, my friends, to be responsible to and for 
one another, right? So are you your brother's keeper? And the answer is yes. So the thing that came to mind as I was preparing for this was a survey that I did way back when called a 360. So a 360 is used a lot of times in corporate America. The purpose is to have people, exactly what it says, I'm in the middle and then the people around me are assessing what it's like to be on the other side of me. And so even though it's a corporate or you know, a workplace document or assessment, the reality is it, it asks great questions. It says, like, do you, does she listen and clarify understanding? Do, do they speak effectively and articulately? It says, do they look beyond the immediate and see the big picture, right? I've talked to some of you recently about immediate versus ultimate, like a big picture mentality. Do they seek to address and resolve the issues, right? Some of us avoid issues. And then we have to admit, like, the issue is you, right? The issue is you. Does the person exhibit behaviors that stick with the mission and the vision? Does the person consider what's best for everyone? So as you can see, even though this is a corporate document, it's such a valuable tool because do we want to know what it's like to be on the other side of us, right? Because that is an opportunity to see what it's like through the lens of somebody else. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure nine out of 10 times, my intention does not match my impact. How many times have any of you have to say, that's not what I meant, that's not what I said? Well, it doesn't really matter as much as the what somebody heard and believed, right? They perceive it, they believe it, they conceive it. And so when we can be in a situation where we can build awareness, become more accountable, improve our relationships, build trust, right? Let me give you the acronym for trust, transparency, relationship, understanding, shared success, and testing assumptions. How many of you are assumers? You assume because it happened once, it's going to happen again. Well, you also remember in the kindergarten when they taught you what assume stands for, and it still stands for the same thing. But since this is a spiritual podcast, I will have you look that up on your own time. So the performance review, which is a 360, it's a performance review that says all you need to do is be open to know and want to grow, right? In other words, allow these people who are on your blind side to be able to say what it is that they see. Now, the other thing about this assessment is it's anonymous, right? So the beautiful part about it is people are a little bit more honest when they know that you're not going to know what they really think about you. Well, in my house, we are brutally honest. And so I asked um, my, I texted my two daughters and I said, Hey guys, can you come up with the first five words, first five words when you hear mom? Well, of course they usually respond with like the truth, the truth. Give me the truth with a capital T through your lens. So my one daughter said, strict, overwhelming, loving, caring, and prepared. My other daughter said, fun, beautiful, determined, inspired, and insane. My 24-year-old son, and I even prefaced it with said, said, can you just tell me what it's like to be on the other side of me and not when you were 16? And he responded, rules, a talker drama, motivation, and sales. Well, his wife said, she said not when you were 16. And he said, I have PTSD from her being my mother. Okay, so this is what happens in my house, my friends. And so do you get why the climate dictates the forecast? And if I can't control me, I got zero chance, zero chance, because this is how my think of me, they think of me. Now, Bob didn't get home from work, so I couldn't survey him. I did find a note from my mother-in-law from five years ago. She filled out what it was like to be on the other side of me. And she said, you're energetic and opinionated. I don't think that was a compliment. You're persuasive. You're willing to help. You're loving and supported, supportive. You're open-minded. And then she, she like squeezed in judgmental and loves God. 
Well, I just want you to know, some of those are literally contradictions, okay? I don't know how you can be judgmental and all that and then still love God. Anyway, my father said, you're trustworthy, you're strongly opinionated, you have a poor self-image, you're exhausting, and he said a witch, but he used a different word. Now, that was also a long time ago. I'd like to think my family thinks more highly of me than they did then. The truth is, when we are open and willing to ask people in our life, what is it like to be on the other side of me? I am telling you, it is the greatest gift that you could get. Be willing, to, be willing and open to perceive and believe because it's not, it's not something that really needs to be debated. It's not a right or wrong. It's what they see, right? And he, although I haven't been in the airport in a long time, I'm pretty sure there's signs that say, if you see something, say something. And so I know way back when I only wanted them to say what I needed to hear to further affirm what I, what I wanted to believe was true. Today, I want them to speak the truth. And when my son said that, I want you to know, it was like he punched me right in the stomach. The truth is, it's really what he thinks. So guys, girls, I got some work to do. So. It's not about denying or dismissing, excusing or defending. It's just about praying for the willingness to hear what it is that will make you more visible like Jesus with these people that you live and love and work with, right? So when you get this excellent feedback and if your skin is not as thick as it could be and you wish it, would, you wish it was, then just get three opinions of people that you think will not be brutally honest. I mean, maybe you could just ease into this. Do not do what I do and ask the intense and irritable children because they're brutally honest. So when you get your feedback, my friends, you can take it to the Lord. Because remember in the verse, a wise person will hear and increase their learning. Right? Don't we want to know how it is that we show up? So if you disagree with all of it, you can take it to the Lord because just like he said to Cain, why are you so angry? You know what you need to do. My grace is sufficient for you. You have all you need in order to succeed. So if you take this to the Lord in prayer, you know you never seek him in vain. He will speak to you from a place of love, and empowerment, and sometimes maybe even a little bit of conviction, and he will tell you. See, he will tell you what it's like to be on the other side of you. And see, he will speak truth with a capital T that doesn't have a filter filled with attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that have, have really ended in PTSD like my children. Because if it isn't one thing, my friends, if, if it's not one thing, it's another. If it's not one thing, it's their mother. And see, what, what God does is he sees you and he knows you. And he sees that you are beautifully and wonderfully and fearfully made. Right? He sees you in ways that you don't see yourself. So when you take this feedback to him, he will remind you of what he sees. Because he, like you, brings the climate into the situation. And the climate that he brings, and we know he's not the shelter from the storm. He is the shelter in the storm. So in the storm of our feedback, we might be able to be pleasantly surprised that he sees us and knows us without all the stuff that we see and our family sees. So here's the deal. If you don't ask the question, you will never know. If you don't ask the question, you will never have the answers to what it's like to be on the other side of me. So this is a breakthrough opportunity that can only be brought through by asking the question and hearing the honest feedback from the people that you know and live and love and work with. And like the quote said initially, we, we're, we're much more patient and loving and kind. My kids used to say, mom, you're, you're more patient with the Burger King lady than you are with me. And I was like, well, of course I am. 
I mean, that made sense to me. The truth is the people that know and live and love us should get the best of us and not the rest of us. So let's find out what they're getting, what they're seeing, so we can become the best version of ourselves. Now, I will tell you that men don't like this exercise um, too much. They, Bob would say, I'm not answering on the grounds I'll be incriminated. So if you can get your spouse and you know, your significant others to give you this amazing feedback, again, I suggest three, and ask them to have the willingness to be honest. And I hope and pray that you can have the willingness to receive it because the climate will always dictate the forecast. And you, my friends, bring a climate wherever you go. Thank you for journeying with Judy on the Journey with Judy podcast. And for those of you who don't know me, I am a speaker, coach, author, and host. I like to think I help people get past the past. So detach at last by getting past the past, that I help people uncover truths and dispel lies, that they have the ability to ignite their light so bright that they have an influence and an impact with the love and the mercy and grace that God makes available to them at their disposal. So thank you for journeying with me. And if you don't already follow me, please do find me on any and all of the social media platforms and feel free to call anytime for a complimentary coaching call so you can learn more about what I can do for and with you. God bless. And remember, it is never too late to become who God has called you to be. Thanks for listening to this episode of Journey with Judy. To learn more about Judy's coaching ministry, receive a complimentary session, and other services she offers, visit judyhair.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend. And remember, it's never too late to be who God called you to be.